section of God's Word I want us to focus on for our sermon this morning is from our second lesson from 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to focus in on verses 3 and 4 of that lesson, but first, please join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we have gathered here together as soldiers in the midst of a battle. Today we find encouragement and the knowledge that we do not fight alone, but that you lead us and we fight together. Bless us, Lord, as we find encouragement from your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This last Thursday, our country celebrated its 248th year of existence. Fourth of July, right? Fourth of July celebration is a time for us to really feel that patriotic pride. And so it's very common to celebrate the Fourth of July with Families wearing flags and gathering together for picnics and parades and pyrotechnics. It's a time for pride in our country. Not to say that our country doesn't have its problems, but on the 4th of July, we we focus on the fact that we do have a lot of blessings in this country. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And many of those blessings, humanly speaking, are because of the brave men and women who fought to secure those freedoms, who continue to fight to preserve those liberties. And so no 4th of July celebration is ever really complete unless there's a recognition of the American soldier. And among the branches of all the military, there's a friendly, I think, a friendly competition about which branch of the military really produces the best soldier. You've got the army. The army is the oldest of all the branches of the military. They've been producing soldiers longer than anybody else. But you also have the navy. They have the the largest and farthest reaching fleet in the world. They they produce well-traveled soldiers. There's the Air Force. The Air Force has a reputation of being the most technologically advanced branch of the military. They produce well-educated soldiers. And then there's the infamous Marines, known as the first line of defense. They produce some of the toughest soldiers in the world. Well, all these branches of the military, they do a really good job of, of making good soldiers. But there's an organization that has been training soldiers for thousands of years before the United States Army was even formed. This organization has been sending its soldiers into the most remote corners of the earth, surpassing even the reach of the United States Navy. This organization, it trains its soldiers from the moment they are born, which means their soldiers have a more comprehensive uh, course of study than even the United States Air Force. And this organization, their soldiers have been standing on the front lines against the powers and authorities of this dark world and against the evil spiritual forces for over 5,000 years. Even the little old ladies in this organization are toughest than the toughest Marine. The organization which I, of course, am referring to is the church. And you are her soldiers. We refer to ourselves as the church militants to remind ourselves that we are not a people at peace with our enemy. We are soldiers at war. Now it may not be as easy for us to see that we are at war. It's not as easy as it was maybe during the time of the Babylonian captivity or the time when Christians were being persecuted in the Colosseum at Rome. But make no mistake, we are at war. And our enemy has been winning victories for for thousands of years. Right now, our enemy is holding millions of souls in captivity. Our enemy is hell-bent on our defeat. More than that, our enemy is hell-bent on our complete and total destruction. Make no mistake, we are at war. And we are not simply fighting for liberties and freedoms. We are fighting for our very survival. And if we have any chance of winning this war, we're going to need to be good soldiers. Well, thankfully, in our second lesson for this morning, St. Paul tells us what it takes 
to be a good soldier. And this is a good reminder for any of us at any time, but perhaps especially today as we're about to install our new preschool director. As Miss Cara joins our ranks, and leads us into the yet uncharted territories of preschool education, I think it's important that she, and everybody else here for that matter, remembers who's in charge around here. Who's really calling the shots? Who's really running the show? Because history is full of, of failed campaigns when people fail to understand the chain of command and I think the last thing that any of us wants is for our preschool to become a failed campaign. So I think it's important that Miss Cara and all y'all know who the commanding officer around here really is. St. Paul writes for us in verse 4 this morning, he says, no one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. So let me first tell you who it's not. It's not the parents of the students who will be enrolled in our preschool. I mean, don't get me wrong. God has entrusted the responsibility of training those children in the way they should go to the parents. And it is not the intent of the members of Messiah. It's not the purpose of our new preschool director to undermine that authority. It is our desire as members of Messiah and it is the desire of our preschool director to supplement and, and to encourage those parents as they train the children in the way that they should go in the training and instruction of the Lord. But it is not the parents of those preschool students to whom we render our salute. And that's especially important to remember for the members of Messiah and our preschool director when some of those parents have thoughts and ideas and opinions and suggestions that aren't in line with the clear teachings of Scripture and that undermine the purpose of our preschool. It's not the parents to whom we render our salute. So you might be thinking, okay, then, well, it must be the president of our congregation. Nope, it's not him either. Though it is true, we, the members of Messiah, have entrusted our president and others like him with areas of responsibility of ministry. We've entrusted them with, with our budget. We've entrusted them with the how and the when and where of our mission. And these are good men, men who are worthy of our respect and our gratitude but it is not our president or those men to whom we render our salute. And that also especially important to remember when those men fail us. When they don't understand. When they don't listen. When they fail to support. It is not the president of the congregation to whom we render our salute. Well, if it's not the parents of the children to whom we render our salute, and it's not the president of our congregation to whom we render our salute, that leaves us with only one clear, obvious choice of who's in charge around here, who's really running the show, who's really calling all the shots. And I think you know who it is. But just to be clear, I'll say it anyway. It's Jesus. Right? That's what St. Paul says in verse 3. He says, he reminds all of us that we are soldiers of Christ Jesus. Jesus is our commanding officer. And it makes sense that Jesus would be our commanding officer. After all, he's the only one who has ever defeated our great enemy, first in the garden and then again on the cross. And Jesus has a lot of experience leading troops. He's commanding the heavenly host to guard us in all our ways right now. And one day... Jesus will lead us and all the fellow believers into that final victory on that great and glorious day. It is Jesus to whom we render our salute. And that's especially important for the members of Messiah and our new preschool director to remember because there will be times when we are the ones who are confused. When we are the ones who have thoughts and opinions and ideas that don't match the clear teachings of Scripture. And there'll be times when we are the ones who are failures. When we don't listen. 
when we don't support, when we don't encourage. It's especially important for us to remember at those times that the one to whom we render a salute is Jesus, the one who has already fought the good fight for us and then laid down his life, sacrificed himself to pay for all of our sins, our our sinful confusions, and our sinful failures. It's Jesus. Jesus is our commanding officer. Jesus is the one to whom we render a salute. It's important for a good soldier to know who's in command. By the grace of God, the members of Messiah and our new preschool director know that's Jesus. But before we're dismissed, St. Paul says there's something else that that we need to be involved in to be good soldiers. St. Paul writes for us in verse 3, Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Paul reminds us that our service as Christian soldiers is a with us kind of service. You see, we're all Christian soldiers. This fight is our fight. Let us not, even for a moment, believe that we have called Mrs. Schrader here to fight this fight for us. We have called Mrs. Schrader here to do what we are already doing, to enhance and expand what we are already doing. We have called Mrs. Schrader here to fight with us. And don't allow yourself to think that you're not qualified for the fight. Don't allow yourself to think that you are not qualified for the gospel ministry because you don't have a degree in child psychology or divine theology or any other ology for that matter. Yes, it's true. Our church body does an amazing job of training experts, people who know what they're doing, people who are capable and competent, people who are experts in spiritual warfare, and that is what Mrs. Schrader is. But our organization... Just like every other military that is largely filled with people with no particular set of skills. Which means everybody in this room, whether you're on the spectrum of the highly trained and qualified to the other end of the spectrum, everybody in this room is able to engage in this with us ministry. What does that look like for you? I'll give you three examples. First thing you can do, pray. Pray for our new preschool director. Pray that our family adjusts quickly and comfortably to their new life here in Johns Creek. Pray that she is given the wisdom and insight that she needs to do the work that we have asked her to do. Pray that her days are filled with more joys than frustrations. And then pray for the preschool. Pray for the students in that preschool that the Holy Spirit would use this ministry to bring the little children to Jesus and to bring the parents of the little children to Jesus so that more and more may join our ranks so that we can go and do more and more gospel ministry. The first thing you can do is pray. The second thing you can do is pay. There's a reason why God has entrusted you with the resources that you have. You're not the kind of people that takes your wealth and stores it up in a barn or buries it in a field. You are the kind of people who give generously and joyously to the work of the church. Right now, in our bank account, right now, we have enough money to completely remodel our education wing into a preschool. And before a single student steps foot on that campus, we have enough money to provide for our new director. You did that. With hearts that are overflowing with gratitude toward a God of grace who gave you his one and only son, you have given and in return your offerings. You did that. Keep doing that. Keep giving as you are already giving. And I I wouldn't at all be surprised if after we've got that building modified and after she's taken care of that we might still have more money left over to go do more gospel ministry. The first thing you can do is you can pray. The second thing you can 
do is you can pay. The third thing you can do is you can participate. And that one, my dear friends, I think that one's going to be hard for y'all. Because you're busy. You're really busy people. But I challenge you. Find a way to get involved in this preschool. Find a way to participate in the preschool. Uh, Watch the kids on the playground. Read a book to them. Teach them a song. Lead them in an art project. Bring the director a cup of coffee. Find a way to participate in the preschool. I personally believe that when Jesus said, let the little children come to me, it's not just because Jesus loves little children, though Jesus obviously loves the little children, but I personally believe when Jesus said, let the little children come to me, it's because Jesus knows how much joy those little children give to us when we bring them to him. I challenge you, find a way to participate in the preschool. I assure you, you will not regret it. This thing that we're involved in, it's a with us type of ministry. We've got our expert. In just a few moments, she will be installed. She will join the ranks here at Messiah. Now it's our time to work with her. Pray, pay, participate. First thing a good soldier needs to know is they need to know who their commanding officer is. If you want to be a good soldier, you also have to realize that no good soldier lets a fellow soldier fight alone. Carl, you're about to join a group of highly dedicated and devoted people. You're going to like it here. Members of Messiah, we have a highly trained highly gifted, highly energetic, and motivated director. You're going to thank God for her. And I'm excited. I'm excited for the fight ahead. I'm, I'm excited because as long as we remind ourselves, remember that it is Jesus to whom we render a salute, as long as we are engaged in a with us ministry, I'm confident that we will be victorious. We are Christian soldiers. By God's grace, we are good soldiers. And so let's pray. Let's pray that God gives us the strength. Let's pray that God gives us the energy. Let's pray that God gives us whatever it takes to be those good soldiers. Amen? Amen.